On this day in 1973, Dixie Deans set a new Celtic post-war record for goals scored in a single match. The record for goals scored in a match for Celtic was set by Jimmy McGrory, who netted eight goals in a 9-0 win over Dunfermline in 1928. The best for the post-war period was held jointly by Neil Mockin, Bertie Auld and John Hughes, who had all scored five goals in a single match. That record was broken by Dixie Deans on the 17th of November 1973 in a league match at Celtic Park against Partick Thistle. It was a turbulent time, both at home and abroad, with the recently ended Arab-Israeli war being followed by the defeated Arab nations imposing an oil embargo on nations who had supported Israel. This caused an energy crisis which eventually resulted in a three-day week being imposed in Britain, but for the moment, football matches were kicking off between 2 and 2.15pm on Saturdays because the use of floodlights had been banned. Celtic were likewise going through a period of unrest, with Davy Hay at loggerheads with the club after refusing to sign a new contract and having been given permission to speak with Tottenham Hotspur, although no deal had been agreed. After failing to report to the ground on Friday, Hay was suspended by the club for breach of contract. George Connolly was reported to have been injured playing for Scotland against West Germany in midweek, but in actual fact had gone AWOL as he struggled to cope with personal problems. It was an understrength Celtic who lined up Hunter, McGrain, Quinn, McCluskey, McNeil, Murray, Lennox, Hood, Deans, Callahan, Dalgleish, Subs, McNamara, Wilson. With the match starting before the afternoon closing time then imposed on pubs, thousands of fans drifted in after kick-off and many missed Deans' first three goals scored in the first 25 minutes. His first on eight minutes came shortly after he had already missed a good chance to open the scoring, pouncing on a weak clearance by Alan Ruff to head it over the stranded keeper. He headed his second from a Tom Callahan cross on 16 minutes and his third was a great individual effort, rounding Ruff and shooting past a defender on the goal line. After Dixie scored with another header to make it 4-0 on 54 minutes, he had a hand in the fifth when Bobby Lennox got in on the act, finishing off a move also involving half-time substitute Paul Wilson. As the skies darkened, Dixie missed two more good chances before netting two more on 74 minutes from a Harry Hood pass and his sixth with almost the last action of the game. Ian Archer wrote in the Glasgow Herald on the 19th of November 1973 Parkhead went slightly delirious in the gathering gloom as this huge compilation was built up the applause growing to a raucous crescendo as the last was scored with the final kick of the ball This was all the stuff of tales to be told to disbelieving grandchildren The press box went slightly demented along with the rest of the ground and we whooped it up with the fans clapping him from the field a rare, almost unique compliment. For Dixie, the goal scorer, is Dixie that most companionable of all footballers. The first person to congratulate him after the match was Jimmy McGrory, who had left his seat in the stand to greet him in the tunnel. Unaware of having set a new post-war record, Deans later recalled, It was actually Jimmy McGrory who told me about the record though. He came down from the stand, grabbed me in the tunnel, shook my hand and said, I thought you were going to break my record, Dixie, and you should have. Dixie left with the match ball, signed by all of the players, including the Partick Thistle team, and also by the great McGrory.